AW Dynamite was? Haha, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. So you can stay and watch till the end and see how much I'll rate it. Stay tuned. I feel like Penta and Lucha Bros in general have a contract of we want always to open the show. No matter the show, no matter the event, we're just gonna open it. Because the first match of the night was Penta El Zero Miero versus JY. And that feud happened because on last Rampage, Penta was having an interview backstage and Jay White and the Bullet Club Gold interfered with him and said some bullshit and basically did this match happen. And of course, Jay White won. And after that, the whole Bang Bang Gang or the Gang Gang Bang or whatever they want to call themselves were taunting MJF. And that was the whole segment, which will result in the tonight's main event, which I'm gonna talk about later. After that, we had a match, Emi Sakura versus Hikaru Shida, which was a little bit strange since Emi Sakura just lost a match against Sky Blue at Rampage. So it was a no brainer that Emi Sakura is gonna lose this match, but I don't know why they were being so dramatic about this match. Teacher versus a student, mentor versus a leader, whatever. Like, I don't know why they were so dramatic about that match. Emi Sakura might be great, but I haven't seen that from her. Maybe I haven't been watching for that long, but Hikaru Shida won, easy peasy lemon squeezy, moving forward. And the next thing that happened was that Adam Copeland addressed the whole Christian Cage drama backstage. Because we all know that if he does that in the ring, some interference would happen again. But that was a sit down interview and basically Renee asked Adam, what do you want Adam? What do you want? And Adam was like, look, I understand Christian's motives, but I have nothing to do. I'm just gonna wait until Luchasaurus and Nick Wayne drops Christian Cage and I'm gonna be there to save him. That's all. So I guess Adam Copeland is gonna be on the shelf until Christian Cage finishes his glorious father TNT championship run and I guess we're gonna see after that Adam Copeland and Christian Cage who knows after that we had a fast one Warlow had a match uh, against a guy a random guy uh, probably he has a name but I don't remember his name he made a single power bump and the referee called called the match and uh, Warlow won and after that Tony Schiavone came out and he was like Warlow what are you doing here? And he pointed to the MJF sign on his wristband and everyone knew that he's coming for MJF as well. And he pushed Shivani to the floor and that was it. I love how dominant is Warlow, but I don't get why everyone should go after MJF. And Kenny Omega is going after MJF and Warlow and Bullet Club Gold. Why everyone? Why just find something better and story related, I don't know. After that we had a short Don Callis segment which led to Kyle Fletcher versus Kenny Omega. The Don Callis was saying how Kyle Fletcher was useless and he let down the family. After that Kyle Fletcher came out and he was like, wait a second, you called me and you begged me to come over and blah 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 blah. And Don Callis was like, okay, you have a match against Kenny Omega. If you beat Kenny Omega tonight, we're gonna talk about more. And uh, Kyle Fletcher, of course, lost, even though I really enjoyed the match. I really enjoyed what Kyle Fletcher showed. I really like what Kenny Omega showed. And at the end, Don Callis was, of course, disappointed again by Kyle Fletcher. But I was not disappointed by Kyle Fletcher. Kyle Fletcher, if you're watching this, I love you. No, I don't love you, but... I don't have negative emotions towards you. After that, we had a quick Lance Archer squash match. And yeah, that was it about Lance Archer. Yeah, um, I don't have anything to say. The guy is huge, the guy is big. I don't know how they didn't utilize him. Uh, apparently, AEW has trouble utilizing big guys like Luchasaurus and Lance Archer. But um, yeah, I, I hope they figure that out in the future. After that, a huge one. Sting came out and wanted to address his future, which, of course, everyone knew what he wants to talk about. The guy is 64 years old. 
he's gonna talk about retirement and he had a nice little speech about his first match about his first opponent he who put him on the map and stuff like this and he said revolution 2021 i came to aw and revolution 2024 is gonna be my last match and i want you guys to remember one thing one thing is for sure that sting's last match is gonna be at AW Revolution 2024. We don't know who the opponent is gonna be. I really hope for The Undertaker pool somehow. We all know that's off the table. So I guess it's gonna be Edge or Darby or something there. Something, someone around that circle. But I don't know who. Maybe Ric Flair, because Ric Flair mentioned that he has one last match in him. But that's gonna be a really miserable match if Sting goes against Ric Flair for the last match. But I don't know, who knows? I don't. Maybe we're gonna see with the time. I don't know when AEW Revolution is. I guess it's after half a year or a year or so, something like this. We're gonna see. I'm really excited to see his last match. The guy can still go at 64, it's amazing, and yeah, exciting. After that, I had, yeah, I don't like these Tony Storm segments, I, I really don't. There is a reason why we don't do black and white movies anymore, Be because it's slow, because thing is really happening, What? and uh, we got nothing out of that segment. It was not comedy, it was not something informative, like even for the character of Tony Storm, we already know that she's playing that free and yeah i don't know what is happening with tony storm but i hope she gets she's she's shit together you know good luck tony and after that the main event the dynamite dozen battle royale where everyone who's in the mid card competed for the opportunity to compete for the dynamite diamond ring who mjf was holding for four years and i guess that he's gonna have hold for fifth year because Juice Robinson won the battle royale when Max Caster was the second to last guy who was eliminated by Juice Robinson and I was really hoping for Max, Ca Max Caster match because the whole promo to that match would have been cringe and funny at the same time and weird at the same time and now it's just gonna be brutal because MJF is like if Juice Robinson wins it's gonna be brutal I'm gonna make him bleed buckets and I'm down to see Juice Robinson versus MJF I'm down to see Max Caster versus MJF I'm down to see Jeff Hardy versus MJF I was down to see a lot of the guys in this battle royale versus MJF so I'm not mad at all that uh, Juice Robinson wins and uh, the only thing that I'm a little bit upset about is that the whole Bullet Club gold is kind of going for MJF's throat which is a little bit too much but we all know that Jay White is gonna lose I mean he's going into his match with the title around his waist even though the title is not his so he's 100% losing and it's gonna be cute little thing if we keep the MJF streak going like a little bit like the Undertaker's uh, WrestleMania streak so I don't know I don't know where this whole thing is going but we'll see next week is the first one of these huge events and it's the battle for that ring and we'll see what's gonna happen with that being said I wanted to present to you my score for tonight's AEW Dynamite. What are you watching there? It's 7 out of 10 as well as the NXT. Yeah, good show, not amazing, not bad, not even mediocre. It was good. 7 out of 10, I think it's a reasonable score. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna see you next time. Peace.